Michael Booman and Moritz Kaminsky are building Albi, a free and open source extension that lets anyone make Lightning Network payments directly from their browser. In our conversation, we talked about exactly how Albi works, some of the similarities and differences between Albi and other browser extensions like MetaMask. We talked about the tech stack Albi's built on, specifically LNURL and WebLN and the importance of those two protocols. And we also discussed some of the uh, concepts of value for value. We talked about identity and we talked about the future of payments on the Lightning Network. Now, if you're enjoying this episode, if you find it useful, the best way you can let me know is by sending in sats that reflect the value you got out of it. If you didn't get any information out of this episode, don't send in anything. If you got a lot of information, if you thought it was helpful, send in a lot of sats. Up to you, the number is your discretion entirely. I can't decide how much value you got out of this show, but you guys can show me how much value you got by sending in uh, sats that reflect that value. You can also send in comments and questions. I read through every single one at the end of the show in the lightning round uh, presented by Voltage. Now, quick shout out before we get into it. Voltage is the premier provider of Bitcoin and lightning node infrastructure. I'll have more from Voltage later in the show in the lightning round. Uh, but until then, I hope you enjoy this episode. Michael and Moritz, thank you both for joining me today on the show. Uh, I have a lot of questions about Albi, and I've been a user of it, and I've watched from the sidelines, and I've seen some of its early growth. Um, but first, before we get into any of that, how about we start off with both of your backgrounds in Bitcoin and why you decided to start Albi? Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, my name is Michael. Uh, on Twitter and on the internet, I'm often called Boomi. Um, I have a technical background, um, software engineer. Uh, I've been working on Bitcoin related topics for quite a few years now. Initially, I did some uh, Bitcoin remittance services uh, to mobile money systems in East Africa, for example. Um, have always been interested in the question how we can bring uh, this open internet protocol of money to the web. And this in the recent years had led to the development of Albi, which we're going to cover today, I guess. So, yeah. More yeah. Tell yourself. Um, also, yeah, big, big thank you uh, for inviting us, uh, Kevin. Great to be here. Um, I'm, I have a background in, in business. Uh, I came into to Bitcoin quite some, some time ago and in 2013 already wrote a master thesis about Bitcoin mining. Um, worked in venture capital then, uh, did investments in early stage startups and um, yeah, came back to Lightning around 2018 with some hacker projects. For example, we tried to implement a Lightning node on a lawnmower and since then I was super excited <laughs> about the Lightning network and um, yeah, kept researching um, projects and then I found uh, yeah, Michael's um, project about the Bitcoin Lightning extension. Mm -hmm. So what was missing at the time when you decided we got to build a extension here? Like what, what did you think was like missing from the ecosystem and how, how did this specifically solve that? Mm. Um, so generally, I think what was missing or that what we're working on is trying to bring, bring the Lightning Network and Lightning functionality from payments to all the other options that we have as close as possible to the web and allow any web developer basically to integrate their web applications, their websites uh, with the Lightning Network. Uh, so to basically natively um, have Lightning payments um, in the web and um, this is what was, was the initial motivation of uh, trying to do that. For that, we obviously have to somehow teach the browser to talk to the Lightning Network. And that's um, the, yeah, that the decision was made to uh, create an extension. I mean, Aldi wasn't also the, the first one. Um, there has been other extensions around uh, that have uh, tried to do similar things. I think one approach um, that was unique to us was that we tried to only pre the bridge basically between the website 
um, so anything that happens in the browser, and any existing um, Lightning node. Um, and we are kind of quite independent of that. Um, so we try to connect websites, we try to connect the web to existing um, Lightning node implementations, like for example, LND, C Lightning, etc. And what are some of those interesting use cases that come up when you start to connect the web with the Lightning Network? What does that enable? Other than streaming payments, like, are, are there any interesting applications that come from that connection? First of all, I mean, streaming payments is the, the first one and the obvi obvious one. Um, and we always say that um, now it's up to the developer's creativity to, um, to use the Lightning Network in completely new ways. And we want to enable those. Uh, we don't know yet uh, where this leads us, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because right now, uh, payments always have been um, in a way that it was quite complicated. And it was always also trying to transfer, for example, information. So you had to give and enter your credit card number or you had to log in with PayPal. Um, so this limited the ways that um, developers uh, could use those uh, payment rails. But now we have this open network, this open protocol um, that uh, allows programmatically to use um, payments directly in, 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 in any application kind of natively. Um, so there are far less limitations. Uh, we can directly transfer value from the, from the visitor, from the user uh, to the website or to um, yeah, any, any party involved there. And um, I think this will lead to a lot of creativity um, out there. Uh, you mentioned um, streaming payments. Um, that's the obviously the first, uh, first solution. But what I'm always also excited about is that we have um, a, um, no limitations anymore in terms of, um, uh, of uh, geography. Um, so it doesn't matter where the user is coming from. Uh, it's suddenly possible to pay anybody from anywhere, um, um, independent of the. Uh, you have the. You don't have the limitation of the on the payment method here. Right, yeah. and uh, to add to add on this, um, maybe also a bit different different perspective, and also what um, why we started Albi, um, um, and that probably is important for a lot of use cases. Is um, now users for the first time have the chance to access um, Lightning applications on the way um, in a very, very easy way, like seamlessly through this extension, uh, what was not possible before. And this is also why Michael said it's basically uh, up to the fantasy of all like web developers, because suddenly they, they have an audience, right? A audience that, is, that, that can access these Lightning applications um, and, and can use them um, what was not so easily possible before. And um, this is not only part like because we use um, these passwords or we, we enable passwordless um, uh, logins, but also that um, um, through this protocol, and maybe we can touch up, up on it later uh, through WebLN that allows these programmatic interactions that um, users can now for the first time, access these these applications that they couldn't before. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, I want to get into WebLN, and I want to get into uh, logins and identity in a minute. But first, I want to understand, like I, I understand the connection between uh, bringing the web to Lightning and making that connection seamless. Um, but there's different approaches that teams have taken in the past to integrating Lightning or in other kind of crypto in our blockchains, um, they've taken different approaches, uh, one being a mobile app um, to kind of like log in or to make payments through, uh, and another being a native browser, um, one specifically that is, is uh, supposed to be launching in the next month or so on Lightning uh, is impervious. So I'm curious to know, what, what's the thought process behind this in order to connect the web and Lightning, we're going to use a browser extension versus a browser, a native browser, or a mobile app. Yeah, so, so from my perspective, I mean, think, first of all, we have really tons of great apps out there, like especially mobile apps. 
um, with a lot of uh, users and they do a great job there. Um, and I guess also the, the Impervious browser is going to be a, a interesting product. But um, I think how, how we tackle this is like, why not a mobile app is we really want to enable uh, way more lightning apps um, that are web native. Um, and that's why we, we, we set off to build really this bridge between your individual wallet, your lightning node and, and these web apps. Um, and um, that's why we, uh, we build an, an extension um, for, for your browser. And um, why not a browser directly? I think certainly browser directly it could be an interesting endeavor. However, I th in my, in, in my, so from what I see, it is a bit like I think you, users are very much used to their current setups and switching costs might, might be rather high to, to, a, to a new browser. And for our use case, um, being the bridge between your between your wallet and the the web app, a, a extension is totally fine uh, for us, and we can already build great features into an extension, um, and do not need like um, these uh, whole browser for the messaging use cases, for example. Right. So I um, to to add on that, I also think. Um, Payment, um, if you talk about payments, it's often kind of a bit of a necessity. Um, so I want to consume um, um, digital and I want to listen to a podcast and want to watch a video. So, so payments are often uh, the necessity. Um, and our goal is actually to make um, um, this necessity as seamless as possible. Um, to put it as much as possible in the background, um, that mental overhead for this also is kind of removed uh, down to zero. And I think with, with Lightning, we for now can do that. Um, and because of that, I also think um, we should bring Lightning to applications that the user is already using and not the other way around. Um, so I don't, I don't think that we should bring um, existing applications to a Lightning wallet just be just to make make the payment possible, but the other way around that we can that that we should make payment possible uh, wherever the user um, um, uh, currently is or whatever tools the user is currently using. So, yeah, I think this is this is what the Lightning uh, network will also en uh, enable. And I I actually also think that in the future we will see more and more applications uh, that have native functionality uh, implemented. So just that they're connecting to the internet, they're additionally also connecting to uh, to the Lightning Network uh, to to enable payments, and this is what we're doing uh, with existing browsers. Right now, this is an interesting idea that um, applications start to enable Lightning natively and become connected into the Lightning Network. Do you think that when making payments, um, or, or when like onboarding people to make payments on Lightning, are you going to be uh, disrupting existing business models of, um, you know, PayPal or, or someone else who, who may be supporting online payments in some capacity today? Or are you going to be primarily um, creating new markets? Like one that comes to mind is like uh, lightning payments for reading a book where every page maybe costs a sat or 10 sats, um, which is just something that doesn't exist in, in at least in North America that's not a common thing um, how do you view that distinction and what do you think is the most interesting market for Albi I think the use case for lightning payments is a, a bit of both it's uh, certainly disrupting business models of, of traditional financial services um, often people mention here the case of remittances and um, this is certainly also where you can use Albi, right? Because you, Albi is, a, is a, in, in a way also a, a um, typical um, Bitcoin Lightning wallet where you can send and receive um, SATs. Um, you can send them wherever you, uh, you want um, because of the nature of, of the Lightning network. However, I would, in the, in the short term, it's not necessarily actually like the sweet spot of Albi. Um, one very interesting part is that what you that you already mentioned, Kevin, is the the fact that we um, 
allow these um, these uh, yeah micro payments for digital goods um, like articles, like videos, and this is certainly a, a new market um, that that we open up here actually with uh, with the RB app. How uh, the the Lightning Network is uh, great uh, there, and it will open up uh, completely new uh, markets and new ways to monetize. Uh, um, digital goods and uh, services that has, haven't been possible before with the traditional uh, payment systems. Just because, for example, the payment fees were too high, uh, the transaction fees were too high, uh, suddenly we can have way lower transaction fees here, um, lower the, trans the higher transaction amounts. Um, uh, but it also uh, was not possible because um, a lot of the payment methods, for example, haven't been uh, accessible uh, or it was just way too complicated for people to, people to receive the payments. So if I'm, a, for example, a creator, I would always need a payment service provider to receive a payment. Maybe I use PayPal or Stripe or whatever it is that make it rather simple, but I'm always depending on those payment service providers and using uh, the Lightning Network, um, this suddenly becomes way uh, easier and way more accessible. And I think with improved um, tooling, it will become even more accessible in the future. Uh, allow uh, completely new ways for people to monetize um, uh, their uh, content and services. So what do you think this improved tooling does to then the, the broader Bitcoin and Lightning ecosystem? Because if we look to other chains, for example, one of the one of the um, projects that people often think of when they hear browser extension and wallet is MetaMask, and how important that has been to the Ethereum community, and that that's been like an integral piece that has enabled a lot of creativity in that ecosystem. It's tied in with basically every app, and and it's one of the most popular apps in the in the kind of entire ecosystem there. Um, so, how do you think about Albi's role then in integrating kind of like the, the lightning ecosystem and helping all these apps connect to each other and to the web? Well, at the end, I guess um, Albi could have a like similar effect as MetaMask had on, on, on the Ethereum um, ecosystem. At least that is our hope and that is what we're working for. We really want to encourage as many um, web developers to build um, lightning based apps. And um, now, what we do with the Albi, basically, we, we, we try to um, make it as easy as possible for users to access these Lightning apps, right? Because there's all, there was always this chicken and egg problem. We do not have enough like destinations to spend such, but we also do not have like nice, easy ways to interact from, from a user perspective with these destinations. Um, and uh, with, uh, with Albi, at least, we, we tackle, tackle the one side. Mm. What, what, what MetaMask definitely did, and that's uh, one great thing that we have to say what the Ethereum community did well there is, it made it easy for uh, web developers uh, to build on it, uh, to build these applications. Uh, whatever the applications are and whatever one might think of these um, applications that are built on that network, but it made it simple for people to do that. And um, I think uh, that's an important case because that where that sparks creativity uh, when it's accessible to people. Um, mm -hmm. And this is for sure, I think, what um, we can bring to the, to the Bitcoin and to the Lightning community here. When you guys are pitching app developers, how do, you, how do you explain why they need to be using Albi? And what are some of those, like, what are some of those conversations like today? What are they worried about? What are they excited about? What's holding them back? I'd love to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, an important thing to understand is uh, that developers do not uh, need to directly integrate Albi, uh, because that's the great thing about uh, uh, what, that we are building on the Bitcoin and uh, the Lightning Network is uh, that we all have this, uh, these open standards and these open protocols now for, uh, for transacting. Um, and that's, that's also on that level. Uh, people are, developers are not integrating Albi directly because that would be the same as if, you know, you're dependent on, on, one, uh, on one player, uh, on one wallet, which shouldn't be the case. Um, it's up to the user uh, to use uh, whatever tool works best for them. 
Uh, so the developers, um, they basically uh, this the lightning network uh, through uh, the standard, standard that is called right now is WebLN. Um, and there's a lot of discussion around that and also goals to improve that, um, uh, develop that further. So there's a quite active development going on in that, set, in that sense. And what the standard is doing is it, it allows developers to, for example, just request a payment on a standardized way. So the, the developer just says, okay, if you want access to this resource, please pay a certain amount of Satoshis. And um, what Albi then does, Albi then comes from the, is, is basically the wallet for the visitor, for the user, and Albi can speak that language and can uh, now uh, pick up on that request from the developer um, and um, provide an interface uh, to the user. And for example, there, ask the user for confirmation if the user really wants to do that uh, payment. And if it's confirmed, um, the payment will automatically send and will, uh, a response will be given, uh, given back to the developer's code. Yeah, they can do whatever they want, want with, uh, with, with that. So, so that's an important thing, thing, I think, which is very different to, when, to typical payment methods. Because right now you would integrate this Stripe or you would integrate with uh, PayPal and you have a very direct uh, implementation there. But right with, with, with this new technology, what, what we're having now is you're basically just integrating this with a standard. You're, you're implementing a standard. You're implement, integrating with the network. Mm -hmm. and, I see. Why, why developers actually should use uh, WebLN? Um, I think one, one big advantage is certainly the better user experience that they could provide to their users because WebLN allows for programmatic interactions. And it also reduces the friction, right? So because today, you, as a user, what you often have to do if you access a Lightning app is somehow you need to scan a QR code, you switch the context, people have to take out their smartphone, and it's, it's just not nice, right? Um, and with WebLN, this is this totally not necessary anymore. Um, and you can even think of like auto payments along the line if, if, this, if this WebLN standard is like further improved. Um, and also, for example, not, not, uh, not additional prompts anymore if, if you um, allow for budgets or um, access a, a Lightning app. Um, this is, I think, UX definitely is one big improvement here uh, when it comes to WebLN. But also, I think one big fear of many developers that, that, that we, we, we've come across and, and uh, we've talked to several because we are really actively pushing this standard right now is um, that actually WebLN is, is really, it's, it's ready, right? It's meant to be used already and it's, it's also secure, right? Um, and these are also just like some fears that, that we encountered within the community. But we, we, we already see great WebLN-based apps out there. And um, they are super happy that they implemented it. And it was, it was uh, very quick. I think maybe um, Michael can also quickly touch up uh, on that, how, how actually how easy it is to implement WebLN in, in, a, in, a, in a app. And, um, and another thing is that it's, um, it also is not, it's, it does not substitute LN URL, right? It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's complementary to that. So, so what are those uh, two? How do you, I'd love to hear the distinction between WebLN and LN URL. What are the differences there for listeners? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, first to WebLN, um, as Moritz just said, um, right now, if you want to pay a Lightning or pay with Lightning online, you often have to. Uh, you, you see a QR code, you see a Lightning invoice, you scan it, you have to switch to a different, different app, and then you come back and things like that. So this is kind of annoying. You have to think about it. Uh, so and we don't really need because we are actually in the digital world already. So if you visit a website, the website is very dynamic, right? Uh, the website uses JavaScript uh, to do all kinds of things. Um, and where, what WebLN or this standard now tries to uh, enable is that developers can request as they would, for example, request access to 
um, a video camera or to a microphone. So for example, if you visit uh, uh, a web conferencing tool, if you visit Google Meet or something like that, the website asks if um, Google Meet can access the camera and the user says yes or no. Um, they don't need to switch some context or do some other setup and something like that. And this is a very simple uh, call uh, for the developer um, and the browser understands it. And this is what we want to achieve actually also in the Lightning Network. Uh, so, um, and so that the interaction is very similar to that. The user just confirms it um, and the payment is done. Uh, no, no context switching. Um, to the protocol, WebLN um, defines a certain set of functions, of JavaScript functions, that developers can use um, uh, in their website uh, to request a payment or to request an invoice and things like that. So this is, this is basically the language that uh, the, the website speaks uh, with um, any Lightning. Um, so this is, this is the, the WebLN context. LN URL is a bit different. Um, and that's why it's also very complementary. LN URL defines certain uh, standards on, for example, how um, a Lightning invoice is received from, um, 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 from a node, from somebody when I want to pay, uh, pay, a, pay a user. Um, and so this is, defines a certain set of HTTP requests uh, that apps can implement um, to just have a standardized uh, of, uh, flow of information there. I see. So these are two complementary standards. Um, when, you, when you look at app developers today and some of the apps that already exist in the Lightning ecosystem, how many of them are, have integrated both? Uh, how many have integrated just one? What, what's the, the status of adoption like when specifically talking about those those standards? I mean, LNURL is uh, quite widely adopted. Um, so for example, a, a lightning address uh, that allows you to send, uh, have a human readable um, name basically for receiving lightning payments, that's basically built on or that's, that's defined in the LNURL spec. Um, LNURL auth is also a certain spec on how um, the flow happens for authentication. Um, so these are actually quite uh, widely adopted. Um, Lightning addresses are now everywhere. Uh, really many applications implemented from uh, uh, BitRefill to um, uh, Lightning uh, tipping bots in Telegram. Um, so that was built on, the, on that standard. Um, WebLN, um, is yeah as we said it's uh, complementary it tries to have a deeper integration into websites um, there um, the adoption is uh, not as widely i would say as uh, lnul uh, but picking up as i said there is a lot of discussion around that um, also a lot of discussion around the, the use cases um, um, when there's a quite new direction really for uh, uh, lightning enabled apps which is makers.bolt.fun um, which uh, is highly recommended uh, to check out um, um, though those list applications that are implementing uh, that web balance standard very cool now one thing you mentioned was lightning addresses and um, i've played around with them a bit I know you guys support them. Um, there's a bunch of other apps in the space that support them as well. I get the idea of this human readable address. I think this is really cool. Does it change the value prop of a lightning address when there's also a browser extension that you may not even need the address at all if you can just use the extension within your browser? How do you think about the, the use case for lightning addresses in a world where everyone is on a browser extension like LV. Mm -hmm. I very much think that the lightning addresses are great for humans, uh, right? So that's kind of an easy to remember and easy to share uh, version um, or easy to, uh, an easy to remember and easy to share type of information uh, to accept lightning payments. Um, 
So I think whenever we do peer-to-peer -peer payments, like uh, from your one human to somebody else, uh, I think Lightning addresses are great. Um, it's also a great way to um, add um, yeah, um, Lightning information to, to websites um, where I want to get paid, for example. Um, so I can use my Lightning address there. Um, but so it's, it's, I would also say it's complementary because we, in a, in a world where everybody uses a light, the, the RB Lightning uh, extension, uh, you would not you need to enter uh, the Lightning address. You basically are just on the website and uh, can pay with one click and you don't uh, care um, what, is, what is behind that. Um, so, but that's a bit of a different use case, I guess, so. Fair enough. Okay, um, I wanna get into some of the discussion around value for value. This is something that I see, there's a little tab on your website right now for value for value. Um, I know this is a, um, it's an easy way to get people on board to Albi and excited about it and, and even integrating lightning addresses. Uh, there's now people that can integrate them, I believe into their, their YouTube feeds on their website. You can quickly get on board if you're a creator uh, and you can kind of like earn value for value uh, from your fans. Um, mm. What do you guys think about the addressable market for value for value. How, how important is that going to be to Albi's business and to Albi's product? So I guess it's, so value for value is, is, is a concept I think that, that especially like we at Albi are super fascinated about and that we want to push further in the, in the future and see uh, where, where it can go, where it exactly can go. This we definitely have to find out. But I think it provides a huge potential for all the creators, especially for, for small creators that have troubles like monetizing their content um, on, on other platforms like Patreon and so on. And um, I think we will definitely see that, that value for value payments in the future will be a significant like you know, revenue stream, a part of advertisements, a part of subscriptions or, or paywalls uh, for creators in the future. Um, right. Do you guys have any insight and, into the behaviors of, of uh, creators using, uh, whether it's using lightning addresses or accepting value for value payments? Do you, do you have any idea of like how they're using that today? So I can, I can tell you how, um, how they use it when they interact with us. Uh, basically, when they reach out to us and ask us how does it work and so on, because this is but this is one of the like big use cases right now why people use uh, the Albi extension, and this is uh, basically that um, you can add a meta tag, for example, of a Lightning address to the header of your website, to the HTML header there. Um, this is one way where. Um, that, that people can leave some like contributions to their favorite um, um, content creator directly on the website. There's really like there's no integration of any like lightning payment button or so involved. Um, then uh, with Albi you can also uh, leave some payments, for example, on on Twitter, um, on web for, for, for people that you follow. Um, because you can now put a lightning address um, in the profile of uh, your Twitter uh, bio. Uh, same is also for YouTube, for example. So now we also bring, and this is what, what the actual intention was, we, we want to bring lightning payments to existing content platforms. Um, and there we, we make use of the lightning address. And if, for example, in YouTube, you can either put the lightning address in the about section of your YouTube channel or in each and every um, video description. And now people have the chance to tip you directly without paying, I don't know, like 35% to YouTube for, 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 for um, transaction fees or tipping fees, right? But, they, but now they can tip you directly. It all goes directly into your wallet, into your node where the lightning address is connected to. Um, and the, the user 
uh, of Albi. They don't have to leave YouTube or, or the video, but they can keep watching and um, can keep like streaming sets. Um, and so this is one thing. And then, yeah, also Bitcoin TV, for example, uh, where we supported um, Reddit. Uh, it's um, just released today uh, where people can leave also some sets there. And this is something that we want to expand in, in the future, for example, for Medium and so on. Um, and yeah, and just like give, give as much, uh, yeah, give or um, add as many as possible like content platforms. Also make them make them like open it up for Lightning payments as long as they don't have any native integration of Lightning payments through a through a button, for example. Um, uh, a lightning address and, and how Albi um, um, detects it is a great way in, yeah, in, in the short term. Which do you think is a more difficult problem to solve right now? Is it getting people, getting creators to add in this lightning functionality to their site or their YouTube or their Twitter? Or is it getting people, fans of the creators, to support through lightning? Because it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's it's not it's it's definitely not a technical challenge at all. Uh, putting a lightning address in the in the Twitter bio, it's more like around um, education and and telling telling these creators what is actually possible today. Uh, I think this is probably the most important thing here. And also, you know, um, once once creators see this. Um, they also at, at some point they like it's in, in their responsibility to tell their users look if you like my content please leave some sats there and show your appreciation towards my the value that I provide to you um, yeah I think it's mainly in the hands of the creators to, to pick this up and of course we have to do some initial like um, yeah education around that to tell them what is possible today totally yeah, I, how I are your that, thoughts there? What is what are your experience with that? So far, I've seen um, well, I've seen it in the context of podcasting mostly, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it for me is definitely a um, a new thing to have to to have to ask for people to support the show. It's mm -hmm. definitely you know it, it's not like a natural thing that you see commonly on YouTube and, and in podcasts. It's it's a different it's a shift in the in the mindset of the creator for sure mm. um, I've seen I've seen payment volumes grow quickly though and as, as you you know if you're consistent with it um, I think it definitely works mm. and it's getting to the point now where in the last month um, the show received uh, I think it was 270 something thousand sets so that's over a hundred dollars um, which was uh, the, the amount that, received, that I received in October and November might have only been like $5. Mm. Um, so it's grown quite quickly. Um, it's still not at the point though where, uh, you know, I can, I can turn that into like a full-time income and, and, and get be entirely audience funded. Um, I think that that does already work for, for bigger shows. Like uh, I know Adam Curry is kind of like pioneered this movement. Uh, yeah. And he he can do that. He he's at that level where he can he can support his lifestyle and support the show directly from audience funding. So I think that's really cool. I wonder what some of the new uh, like now that I see it, now that I understand it, I start to see it in different contexts too. Like I see it happening. For example, one one thing I saw a couple of days ago was on Stacker News, uh, which is kind of like a Reddit style Lightning forum. Um, Someone posted a comment, and it was a response. Someone, someone initially posted a, a post on Sacker News and said, I need help with this problem. I have a 1 million sat bounty for anyone who wants to help me solve it. Mm -hmm. And someone posted a comment, solved the guy's problem, and they paid a million sats. So for posting a comment, you just got like 500 bucks, uh, or whatever the equivalent is now, maybe 400 bucks of, uh, of sats paid directly to you. There was no contract, no requirement. It was truly like value for value. You gave something valuable. You helped this guy solve the problem and you got actual money instantly as a result. So I definitely see it picking up steam. 
I wonder what, what other, what do you think would be the most exciting use cases for value for value among the ones we've mentioned? Like we, podcasting maybe has a head start today, but there's podcasting, there's general like blog posts, there's YouTube, there's Twitter, there's, there's all sorts of avenues for this. Are there any particular ones you guys are excited about? I mean, I think podcasting has a, um, has shown um, that greatly and has a great adoption there, which is uh, super cool. Um, what I think is that um, like typically monetization for digital content was, is always kind of hard, right? Because um, anything digital is always just a copy. The, the production, the reproduction costs of anything is, it goes down to zero more or less. So I can, if I, if I download an MP3, whatever that is, it's always just an identical copy. Um, that's the same for a blog post or an article. So it's always an identical copy. It's easy to reproduce. It's easy to, 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 to spread out. That's why it's quite hard to put good content, I guess, behind uh, uh, typical paywalls um, because the paywall um, can be uh, uh, worked around or can be hacked around because somebody always just has a copy. I can pirate it. I can just upload it somewhere else. I can send it to you via email. It's all fine. And, and I think the value for value idea there is that um, is, is, is matching way better than typical uh, to uh, anything digital uh, to, to content um, just because um, it respects that information wants to be free. It respects that information can easy be, easily be copied. So if we make the payments, um, for that um, as easy as the copying of the content itself. Uh, and this is what we can do now with the Lightning Network. I think this can become way more uh, widely adopted um, uh, for the publishers, but also obviously then for the, for the, for the users. Um, like the feedback that, that we are getting is that uh, is, is quite good, that a lot of people are quite interested in especially supporting uh, their creators. And uh, basically, uh, that's why I also like the name value for value, because you get a lot of value from the, um, any, any creator. And um, now with one click, you basically can say uh, thank you and give some value back and uh, allow creators to continue creating the great stuff. Um, particular, I'm quite interested in seeing that um, obviously for um, also written uh, content for blog posts, uh, as you as you mentioned before, uh, which goes in the direction of uh, also I would say uh, journalism. Um, um, that um, for good articles, uh, people are um, able to uh, say thank you and pay uh, the creators directly for that, the journalists directly for that. Um, bands, music, uh, for music streams uh, in that sense, for example. Um, I think it's a, it's a perfect match. Um, but cool. I think it also goes, goes um, uh, uh, further than that. Um, for example, as you mentioned, if somebody um, has a problem uh, that I can share in a forum uh, and somebody helps me solving it, um, and now as it becomes easy, um, uh, sending money back, that's uh, quite helpful. So, for example, also Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a nice example for developers. Uh, we often say uh, thank you. Um, and it would be great uh, to leave a few sets there um, if somebody answered a complicated uh, question for one person and it's now answered for a lot of people. Um, I think um, a lot of the people would just say thank you with here a few sets for that. Yeah. yeah. What I also find very interesting is if you if you can and that's what also we were, we were working on with this meta tech because it's extendable basically um it's like implementing cascading payments so not only that the, the immediate publisher gets paid but all other con um, all contributors um to this final piece of, of content um they also get some some fraction that is like individually determined by the publisher, for example, or in, a, in another way. And um, this is something that, that, is, that gets very, very interesting once this picks up a bit, right? Because then you have incentives totally aligned down the line from every producer to the final content um, consumer. 
Um, and um, we are also, we also thinking about how we can enable these cascading payments, for example, with lightning addresses. Um, and um, this could be, for example, a, a additional service that we provide with, um, um, together with the, with the get RB lightning address. So if you if you if you um, get on um, getrb.com slash uh, lightning minus address, then you can create your own lightning address. And this in, in the future, for example, maybe there is a way that you can configure your own lightning address in a way that um, people who contributed or helped you on creating this piece of content can also earn some subs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really cool idea. That's something that um, that's one feature wish list. For, for me on podcasting. Um, I know the Fountain team's working hard on it, but uh, I would love the ability to, you know, have a conversation with you guys and have you just send me over your Fountain username or something or some like human readable name. Maybe it's a lightning address. Maybe it's just a Fountain name. And I can instantly insert it into the show, give you guys a split, instantly in insert a producer and have them get a split. And, you know, Fountain can in, insert themselves, uh, Podcast Index, who supports the, the kind of like yeah. API and, and allows them to, allows Fountain to build out the app, they can get a split. And it's like all the way down the line, every single payment that comes into the show then, everyone can see beforehand that it's getting split among all these different parties. I think that's really cool. And it probably starts to change the relationship that, some forms of creators have with their third parties. Like right now, uh, two specifically that I'm thinking of is like publishers, uh, book publishers. So if I'm an author, I typically work with a publisher. There's some kind of relationship and there's some kind of like uh, fixed and variable costs that come from books. And depending on how many you sell, they may take a certain cut. You could like standardize that across the entire uh, book selling experience where it's just like every dollar that flows in we're just gonna instantly send out funds to both parties same with music and music labels and artists yep. you have like all these complex relationships of it, they're kind of like vague no one really knows who's getting the money um, but it'd be so cool if you could just if a, a musician that you want to support you could see right on their profile you know oh if I say if I pay uh, a million sats to this musician, 584,312 are gonna to go to the musician, 213,000 are gonna go here. You know, it's just like you can just watch it move. It's crazy. I think that'd be like an enormous boost for, for all sorts of industries. Uh, definitely, because I also wonder if I consume this content, right, who actually earns the money. But if I see that it's really it, um, the, this specific author receives the money, uh, and because I really like this this this, this chapter that he just wrote, um, then I'm probably as a as a as a reader I'm more likely to pay than uh, than I if if I did not know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I wonder if this also starts to um, change the way people. Uh, I wonder if it like opens people's eyes up to how much money is actually being consumed by some of the intermediaries along the way. And it's specifically an example for musicians. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that's been a, a common theme is that musicians are always kind of angry at Spotify for taking all, all the money that comes from, from mostly their work. Um, and uh, I wonder if this kind of like illuminates that and, and forces, do you, think it, do you think it forces intermediaries to start contracting their uh, their take rates and their cuts? Like, do you think all of a sudden now uh, YouTube, for example, YouTube takes 45% of all ad revenue. Do you think that forces them to, to kind of pull back and uh, start to take a smaller cut when they know that creators can just get paid for free um, without, without them being involved? I, I well, definitely uh, think this com competition, uh, sorry, Moritz, uh, but I definitely think this competition will lead to, uh, 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 first of all, better service for, for the artists and the creators, but then obviously also for uh, better um, 
uh, better rates for the creators. Um, because right now, the, all these platforms, they still have the monopoly on that. And they have the monopoly just because um, they facilitate, or a big part at least, they facilitate the payment. Um, and now we have the option to, uh, um, uh, to take that away, to open up, to, uh, to, to open, uh, create alternatives for that. Um, so you're not dependent on, on that anymore to facilitate the payment. You can use uh, the Lightning Network uh, to facilitate the payment and use uh, completely new ways to distribute your content, um, which hasn't been possible before. And I think uh, it's always great um, um, when we have alternatives. Alternatives will always lead to, um, uh, to a better outcome, to better services and to better, better options. One other thing is that the alternative, sometimes um, people think that you have to take one or the other, but you guys are taking an approach where you can have a YouTube channel, you can have ads, you can do everything you're already doing, and you can earn for outside, right? Like that's a cool thing where you, you're truly, you're not requiring them to lose out in order to gain yeah. this new alternative. They can keep doing exactly what they're doing and they can also use this new alternative. And maybe one day they find out the alternative yeah. pays more than the, the current setup. And then, and then maybe they can get yeah. rid of it if they want. But yeah. they don't have to. They can just like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, that's, I think that's, it's, that's, this is super important because, sorry, uh, it's, it should not be exclusive to people who only have like sats to access contents because it's unfortunately still a very limited amount who have who can pay um, uh, Bitcoin Lightning. Um, but this will certainly change. And now we give this additional revenue channel to, to publisher. They can promote it among their own audience. And then they suddenly realize, ah, look, maybe this, this channel is, this, this way of, of, of earning money is way more yeah, efficient in a sort of way because I have to pay less cost to others. And, that's, and then they can, can promote it um, and, and only they can do it like this because they have the possibility like before they did not have that. Right. Now, I'll be, I can already see is becoming a great tool for creators. And we just talked about a lot of the different applications there. Do you think Albi will be as impactful or even more impactful for things like merchants or SaaS businesses or other aspects of like internet commerce? that aren't directly related to creators? Can be, definitely. I think um, in the area of gaming, um, it's, um, because this, is, this is, a, is, a, is, a, is a space where users are very much used to paying micro, uh, very tiny amounts instantly across, across um, or within the game, across games maybe, like to purchase uh, in-game goods and items. I think this is also a, a space that very likely we see some some um, like we yeah, have bigger adoption of Bitcoin Lightning payments and and I'll be also here serves as a, as a great way to to onboard gamers to to yeah uh, apps or games online like browser based games that integrated um, Bitcoin Lightning already. Yeah, hmm. I th I think the the Lightning Network. Um is particularly great for any digital goods and services. Uh, so less for physical things, I would say, but especially for digital goods and services that you directly consume. So yeah, there you need the, the instant kind of payment, uh, also the high transaction volume, volume uh, tra small transaction amount of kind of payments. And um, for all of those, I think um, Albi is great because Albi uh, reduces the mental overhead uh, for these payments. Um, so whatever that is. So, well, right. So, yeah. Interesting that you said you think it's going to be better for digital goods than physical goods. Is that because of, you know, we already have a pretty good solution in credit cards? Or is that, I'd love to hear your thought process on why. Mm -hmm physical goods may not be as appealing as much of a use case for lightning when I, what I what i think here is when we for example order physical goods online so because there um it's you will you will get the delivery much later anyway so uh if it's the pay, the, the payment instant now or how complicated the payment is doesn't matter that much in my point of view 
to an online shop, I add some articles to, uh, to the shop. I have to enter my address anyway. Um, um, where the, the goods should be shipped. And now um, paying is, is annoying, but um, making it, using Lightning as a different payment method doesn't make, it, uh, make the flow that much better. So if I enter mm. a card number or if I pay with a lightning, uh, with lightning is kind of, it's, it's yes, obviously we li lightning has advantages, but in terms of user experiences, uh, it's not that much of an improvement, I would say. Uh, but whereas, for example, for anything digital, you know, if you want to listen to the podcast or I want to read this article or I want to play this game, um, there, basically, with one click, I'm directly consuming the good that I'm buying. I'm directly consuming the service that I'm buying. And there, the payment needs to be seamless. It needs to be as much in the background as possible. It needs to be uh, instant. And these are all um, great um, uh, properties that the Lightning uh, Digital goods are also much more global. Um, physical goods, you always have the delivery problem. So you can only buy it where it's sold anyway or where anyway. Uh, but with uh, the Lightning Network, um, I can now pay um, the creator or the artist from the other side of the world uh, and consume um, their digital goods and services directly. And that's what the Lightning Network can facilitate much better. Right, okay. That makes sense. That's a really good perspective. Um, I guess one other, one other component is the transaction fees on, um, on physical goods and on credit cards can sometimes be pretty high if it's a smaller value item. Um, that actually brings up a good point, though. I, I'm curious to know what the, what, can you talk to me about the business model of Albi and, and where you guys plan to make money and how, how do you make that sustainable? Is it through a transaction fee? What, what's your thought process there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, Albi, the browser extension, is an is a open source project, right? And um, we currently live from our own like, investments from, 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 from a grant. Um, and that helps us or helped us a lot now to kick off the development. But yeah, as you say, somehow it needs to be sustainable, right? Um, and also, there need, also need to be like, there need to be some funds that flow back to the, to the developer community. And, and that's why, um, yeah, we are like in the process of creating an organization that, that, that helps us to do so. Um, and um, one way, for example, to to earn money with with Albi, the browser extension is to to offer services um, all around how we can make it as easy as possible for users to to get on the Bitcoin Lightning network because I think there is um, there we solve a problem and this could be for example through um, yeah cashback rewards paid out over the Bitcoin Lightning network could be like um, fiat to Bitcoin on ramp. Uh, but direct on RAM to, to Bitcoin Lightning. So this could be services that, that could uh, yeah, that could be a business model also for Albi in the future. I just had a thought. I wonder if you guys could take the exact same value for value approach and apply it into the browser extension where you say like maybe by default, there's like a 1% goes back to Albi to support the project but users can turn it off if they want. They can change it to 10%. They could change it to whatever they want. Uh, do you think that that could be a sustainable model for, for earning revenue? Yeah, it could be. I think we should, we should, we should try that out. We should do some re user research uh, for that. Uh, why not? I mean, we are, we are, we are a strong proponent, proponent of this movement. So, and we, 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 we should convince more people to use that. So I think maybe then they're also open to that, definitely. Good, good idea. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an interesting thought. And here, that's the thing. That's kind of what the Lightning Network enables, right? So because we still have peer-to-peer -peer payments, and we additionally would have uh, here a peer-to-peer -peer for value uh, payment to a service provider that you're using. So completely impossible uh, with um, other payment uh, rails so far. Yeah, interesting. Um, well. That would be really cool, I think, to see because uh, I think the podcast index may be using that as well right now. 
uh, in their service. Um, mm. I believe the app developers get to decide how much they pay the podcast index. I think some have it set to like 5%, some have it 1%. Mm. Uh, I, I could be wrong on the, the details of that, but I believe they're using like a value for value approach yeah. there. Um, and anyways, yeah, it could be cool for other other, other software projects yeah. to take a similar uh, stance. Um, but I want to talk about, uh, let's move the conversation to identity and whether or not this is going to be like an important part of Albi's ecosystem and Albi's browser extension, right? Because we talked about payments and that's that's cool to be able to send money back and forth over Lightning, integrated with web apps. Um, identity is also another super important component for web apps. Every web app has their own system. Um, you know, now when you get to a, a new app, it's like log in with Facebook, log in with Google, log in with Apple. There's like a billion different ways to log into things. Um, is Albi kind of trying to become a, a tool that, that developers can use to just have users log in and know who they are and kind of like identify them? Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a, it's a very relevant use case for Albi right now, and they can already do it today. So we, all, we offer um, a login with Lightning, either through LN URL auth or, or WebLN. Um, and there are also quite some some applications out there already that um, implemented this authentication mechanisms. Within. Um, so far, it's mainly for anonymized logins. Um, but I guess it could also be extended to 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 a way, for example, that you log in with Albi and still get prompt which user like details do you want to submit to the specific Lightning app so that they can really build up an identity for you, right? Because this is a bit the tricky part here. Actually, a lot of service providers, they somehow want parts of your identity actually to, to advertise their services later on again. Um, and it depends on how, how it is implemented. This is currently not possible today. Hmm. And uh, maybe we need better tools for that or, or, or better ideas around that. Hmm. One, one additional thing here is also, for example, when you um, already paid for certain content um, or for certain services and you want to access it again, um, that's kind of also r widely related uh, to identity. Typically, right now, you would need uh, some kind of authentication, some kind of um, login system. Um, but we see it also in that sense that if you access the content again that you already paid before, that we can tell the website, uh, like Albi can tell the website uh, that uh, here is the receipt. I already paid this content again. This is me again. Um, do whatever you want with that. Basically, give me access again to the content or just be informed that I already paid you. Um, so in that sense, this is also uh, a certain way of authentication. Is there anything that you guys are, like you're, you're so deep in the weeds on building Albi and figuring out what some of these interesting um, uh, technologies are going to be that you should include in the product. Um, is there anything that you guys see as a use case that developers should be using Albi for but haven't realized yet maybe? You mean, or any uh, lightning uh, applications you think that need to be built? Um, maybe leveraging like WebLN and LN URL. Mm. Um, so, so, so first of all, I think the most obvious uh, thing is um, everywhere um, where we transfer some digital information, uh, where we want to have a payment stream, that could be rethought. Uh, this process could be rethought using uh, using Lightning, using WebLN. Uh, as we um, said before, well, if, either if it's a paywall kind of system or if it's a value for value uh, kind of system. Um, and uh, I think this needs to be leveraged or can be leveraged by developers uh, much more. Um, this is, I think, the most obvious, uh, the most easy one. Uh, another example, maybe for. Um, I mentioned before the makers.bolt.fun uh, um, directory, um, which has a uh, an quite um, interesting feature, I would say. It's kind of the directory for the discovery, uh, content discovery, right? 
and people can vote on it. And it's, I think, very similar to what Stacker News is doing. Uh, there have been the votes, the, pa the payments for the votes. I'm not voting with, with a like, with a click, but I'm actually voting with uh, Satoshis. Uh, but these Satoshis directly go to, um, um, uh, to, the, to, to the creators, uh, to the publishers, to the website owners in this case, similar to what uh, Stacker News is doing. So the payment flow is, is, um, is not between the, the website, the bold.fun website, the discovery website, but directly who add to, to the recipient. And I think this kind of marketplace situation uh, for digital goods is also quite an interesting one that we can now facilitate much, much better uh, than we could do that, do that before. Yeah. Yeah. Stacker News is another yeah. great example there. The Stacker News. Yeah. I can get that to uh, um, wider yeah. systems. Yeah. Just, uh, just to explain why this is so interesting, because today, um, if, if you're sort of a marketplace app, right, where you have uh, a user that pays to another user on the platform, you uh, have to uh, um, yeah, have the funds in a sort of like your own, yeah, you are in a custodian role, basically, yeah, you, you collect the funds, and then you are also responsible for the funds. This would mean that you, you have to be licensed as a money transmitter, or you are like outsourced the service to another um, company that acts as a, as a money transmitter. But overall, it's just more like it's more like hassle. It's more like uh, yeah, additional burden that comes with cost that you, as a developer uh, or a web uh, app publisher, you do not want, really want to take um, take uh, take care of. Um, and potentially, there are, there could be a solution um, to uh, to have people that use your app directly pay to each other, but still you, as a as a web service. Uh, get a notice of it and then you can show like okay yeah mm, invoice paid for example release the good to this person mm. and uh, this is this this could be it could be very interesting because it yeah it, it solves a big problem for marketplace operators um and uh, but it's possible actually through lightning and and uh with with web and lightning addresses and albi right Okay, I want to uh, hear from you guys what maybe some of the most interesting lightning applications um, that you've seen to date are. Um, anything that you guys particularly use a lot, uh, really enjoy, want to give a shout out to anything outside of Albi that looks exciting today? So I, I definitely think um, the... Um... Um, make us a bolt dot fun is a great place to start to discover all these uh, great um, lightning apps. Um, um, other than that, of course, I mean we we already have some of them um, integrate um, WebLN, and this is also something that we would like to continue. So so every every web developer who has any question should reach out to us, um, and we are happy to 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 jump on a phone call. Um, and talk about how it could like how, how it could be to to in, to implement Webel and here. Um, yeah, I would I would like to actually mention too <laughs> as an example that I like a lot uh, that showed uh, this potential in my point of view also. Uh, like one is uh, Collider, uh, like a trading platform. I'm horrible at trading, uh, but I like uh, because I have a direct integration basically from my. Um, from my wallet, I can directly go into a long position from my wallet with one click and close the position uh, with another click that uh, pay is paid out directly to my wallet. Uh, uh, super seamless, super nice integration, um, which is uh, yeah amazing. Um, and another one would be actually, um, it's been around for a while and I think that should be used much, much more is uh, SparkShot. Um, uh, SparkShot as a tool where I can uh, publish uh, art and we then then collectively can kind of unreal it by paying for pixels um, of the art uh, in Satoshis. Um, and I think that's uh, another great example of what's possible um, with the Lightning Network because I can now just pay small amounts for, for, for the pixels, payment uh, can go directly. Uh, 
to the creator and uh, yeah, the market base basically just facilitates that. So, and they do that quite nicely. Yeah, those are all great picks. Um, where can people go to find out more about Albi uh, and, and get set up? Um, so, yeah, so we are online on, on getalbi.com. Um, there's also where you find information about Albi, uh, where you find the download links to the browser extension. Um, you can like follow us on, on Twitter at getalbi, at getalbi um, or Telegram at um, t.me slash getalbi, for example. Um, and to all the developers out there, but actually we, we do not only address developers, but also designers and for example, marketeers, there is a, um, how, how, if you want to, yeah, help us on working on get Albi, there is a, uh, we have a Slack channel in the Bitcoin design community. Um, it's called, um, hashtag, hashtag lightning minus browser minus extension that you can join. Um, and um, yeah, say hello, um, come to our weekly community calls um, and, and see how you can contribute. That would be also super cool. And if you've already tested it out, uh, um, the, the extension, you can also leave some feedback on um, feedback.getalbi.com. Mm -hmm. Love and it. Here, a, a shout out to the Bitcoin design community who has been greatly helpful and who's generally doing a great job in um, rethinking um, um, and, yeah, uh, payment applications and thinking about uh, the UI and the UX and how we can improve that one, um, which is super important, uh, most important thing, I think, uh, for adoption yeah. uh, and for coming up with new ideas. I agree. I think that one's a... Uh, it's definitely for the for the last few years has been has been almost a missing link for Bitcoin to have that like beautiful seamless design and um, definitely seeing the work that they're doing there uh, and yeah shout out to them. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you guys so much for taking the time. I'm really excited for everyone to listen to this episode, uh, and I would love to have you guys on uh, uh, later down the road. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome to the Lightning Round presented by Voltage. Voltage is the industry leading provider of Bitcoin and Lightning Node infrastructure. In fact, many of your favorite apps and services already use Voltage to scale their business quickly and easily without maintenance. Voltage also offers an inbound liquidity product called Flow, which helps you as a node operator get inbound liquidity easily. Overall, Voltage is creating the industry standard suite of non custodial products, helping brands, engineers, and startup scale. To learn more about Voltage, visit voltage.cloud. Lightning round, here we go. In the last seven days, you guys sent in 29,696 sats, 18 different supporters, sent in 17 different messages. Some of these are from previous episodes in the last week, but uh, a few of them, a few of these messages have come in in just the last couple of days. First, I'm going to read through top five supporters of the week. Mary Oscar has the crown with 9,212 sats, an anonymous user with 4,410 sats, uh, Jeffrey with 3,430, Nick with 2,940, and Y with 2,254. Uh, quickly, I'm going to read through the comments and questions you guys sent in. Uh, first up, we have Jeffrey. Jeffrey says, uh, in response to episode 27, Jeffrey says, great show. I like the juxtaposition of asking the guest, Ken, about both the traditional rails and the startup he's building. Hope to see more of this pattern on your show. Uh, Three-star idea. If you hint about or tell us who your future guests are, we the commenters could supply questions. You could drop sats to us for helpful or rich, or context-aware uh, planned shows. We could help make the show better, value for value. Jeffrey, this is a great idea. Um, I've, I've toyed around with it before. I think I've mentioned a couple times uh, future guests in past episodes, but one of the reasons that I, I don't do it regularly is because sometimes I have already recorded that episode with the future guest. It hasn't gone out yet, um, and so, have, had I asked you for questions on this show, um, 
I wouldn't have been able to get them to the guest because I've already recorded it. Uh, one thing I could do though, maybe a, a solution here is to, to shout out on Twitter the day before I'm about to interview with a guest um, because sometimes the, the release schedule of a show doesn't line up with when I'm filming the next show. So uh, it might be helpful if I start tweeting out you know, I'm about to film with so-and-so, send in your questions. Uh, and you're right, you know, I, I Fountain supports the, the ability for uh, podcasters to send sats to anyone. Um, I can start sending sats to people who send in great questions. That's, that's a really good idea. Um, I hope Fountain enables that. I, I will start to share more about future guests on Twitter. Um, but thank you, thank you for the comment and for the... Uh, 34, 30 sats. I, I really appreciate it. Um, Mary Oscar sent in a bunch of test messages. I wonder what he could be testing. Uh, an anonymous user sent in one sat and said, let's go on episode 25. Uh, and Leo sends in 89 sats on episode 26 with Justin Resvani, and he asks if Zion will use the Noster protocol. I don't believe so. I could be wrong on that, but uh, I don't believe so. That, that's another one I have to dig into a little more in depth. Uh, I believe uh, Fiat Joff is working on that. Uh, I would love to get him on the show and discuss exactly how that protocol works. But no, I believe, I believe Zion is built off of the, uh, some of the technology that Sphinx has been working on. Um, but, uh, I appreciate you sending me the comment, uh, Leo and a couple more test questions from Mary Oscar, but otherwise that's it for this week. Send in all your comments and questions from this episode and I'll answer them in a few days, uh, when the next episode comes out, I've got a really good lineup of guests that I've already actually recorded with. So you'll start to see some episodes coming in in the next few days and, uh, I can't wait to see all your comments and questions and what you think of it. See you next time.